time today, I'm going to be talking to you about the forests of the Northeast, the threats posed by invasive insects, as well as some minor and easy things that you can do in order to detect these populations earlier to reduce the impacts associated with these pests, as well as to reduce the overall costs and increase the potential for management and to slow the spread of these pests. I wanted to start off by letting you know how I got involved with forests and why I believe that they really contribute to the culture of an area and to the sense of place. When I was a kid, every five years, my family would pack up the VW Scirocco and drive from Cincinnati, Ohio to Arcata, California so my dad could attend a high school reunion. And while the high school reunions weren't very interesting for me, uh, what I enjoyed doing is going to Redwood National Park and seeing the giant redwoods because there's been a long history of logging and forestry in that area and those redwoods really contribute to the feel and the look and the culture of that area. So I was very excited when a few years ago we moved to the northeast which is 85 percent forested and uh, where the trees are an important part of the landscape of the area including interspersed in even highly uh, population dense urban areas. Forests can contribute to ecosystem services. They provide habitat, food, uh, cycle nutrients, water, and air. They're important economically, providing the materials that we use to build our houses and to heat our homes, to make fine furniture, art, musical instruments, and paper products. And also, they're places where we do a lot of recreation, whether it's enjoying the uh, fall foliage change or uh, hiking, as we just heard about, or um, hunting or camping. They're places that are important to a lot of different people for a lot of reasons. And they're also at risk right now from invasive pests that are introduced by trade. The Port of Boston has been involved in international trade since colonial times through to the modern era, where we have high volumes of trade that are imported before they are distributed regionally and nationally. The insects aren't coming in necessarily with the cargo, but rather with the wood packing material and the dunnage that is used to secure the loads during transit. We have a history of having imported forest pests into this country since colonial times, with more than 450 non-native insect forest pests um, since that time, many of them introduced into the Northeast. The rate of introduction hasn't actually changed much over time. On average, since uh, colonial times, there have been about two and a half insects that are introduced um, each year into the country with about one insect or disease um, of concern that causes economic damage about every other year being introduced. And some of the rogues gallery of these invasive pests of concern include things like gypsy moth, uh, chestnut blight, and Dutch elm disease. But while the rate of introduction really hasn't changed much over time, the type of insect being introduced has changed, especially since the 1970s. The insects that are being imported are those that are found within wood. They're the phloem and wood boring insects. These are ones the larvae feed within the wood of trees. So if you are cutting down trees in order to make dunnage and wood packing material, you can easily see how some of these might be incorporated into that material. There have been some regulations that have been passed recently that should reduce the importation of these pests, but with the high volume of material that comes in from all over the world, there is still a chance for introduction and establishment in the forest. And the, um, these pests, when they're within the tree, although they may be difficult to detect from the outside, they're actually causing a lot of damage. It can be structural damage, or what they could also be doing is feeding in the layer of the tree where the nutrients in the water move, and they disrupt that nutrient flow so that essentially over time they're strangling the tree. One of the pests that gets a lot of attention and is of particular concern to the Northeast is the Asian longhorn beetle. It has very limited distri distribution in the country. There aren't very many known populations of it, but some of the populations that have been detected are in the Northeast, and the largest known population of Asian longhorn beetle is in Worcester, Massachusetts. 
it is um, of particular concern to the Northeast because it attacks a wide range of different kinds of host trees, but it has a particular preference for maples, which are an important component of the nor northern hardwood forest type. While the adult is large and showy and easily identified, it's actually the juvenile or the larval stage which causes the damage feeding within the tree. Another pest uh, which has a lot of concern to the Northeast and is getting a lot of attention these days because of its rapid spread is emerald ash borer. It's readily confused in the public mind with Asian longhorn beetle, likely because both have been introduced from Asia. Both of them are wood boring beetles and people tend to use acronyms a lot when they talk about these pests, making it easily, uh, easy to confuse the, the two. Unlike Asian longhorn beetle, um, this pest is very specific to its host tree. It feeds on all true ash trees. Also, unlike Asian longhorn beetle, the distribution is actually fairly widespread. It was first introduced uh, into the mid-Michigan region, where it was first detected in about 2002. And since that first detection, it has now spread to more than 20 states, including several northeastern states, and has killed tens of millions of ash trees. The trees that it has already killed, as well as the trees that it is predicted to kill, have earned this insect the uh, dubious title of the most destructive forest pest in North America. Much as with a, um, Asian longhorn beetle, it's not the adult, which is actually a very attractive insect as far as insects go, although the damage is not, um, is, is not attractive. The, uh, the damaging stage is the larval stage. These larvae feed right underneath the bark of ash trees in that cambium layer, which is where all the nutrient movement happens. Uh, they go after healthy ash trees as well as ones that are already in decline, and they can kill a healthy ash tree three to five years following initial infestation, so the trees decline rapidly. <sighs> These insects, on their own, can move less than two miles a year. However, once they've escaped into the natural environment, they can be moved great distances by people whether people are moving infested nursery stock, infested wood products, or infested firewood, they can go from distribution of less than two miles a year to hundreds to thousands of miles in a year. And it's not, these insects have a great cost. And it's not just the change in the property values associated with what happens to our street trees following an infestation, but it's also ecological costs as well as cultural costs. Asian longhorn beetle is of great concern to people who are involved in tapping uh, maple trees. So whether folks are involved in supplementing their incomes due to the production of maple syrup, whether you just enjoy this northern, uh, northeastern culture and tradition of going to sugar houses in the springtime, or whether you just enjoy maple syrup on your pancakes, Asian longhorn beetle has an impact beyond just on loggers and environmentalists, but also on communities, your neighbors, and yourself. Emerald ash borer also has a, a cultural tradition that it's imperiling through its spread. The Wabanaki Native Americans have a very close relationship with black ash. They use it in the production of very attractive, uh, functional, and decorative baskets. But it's not just the socioeconomic cost to basket making that are threatened by emerald ash borer. There's a very significant spiritual loss as well in that the creation story uh, for the Wabanaki is that Glusclap shot an arrow into a black ash tree and the resulting splinters resulted in the Wabanaki people. So the cultural loss associated with the loss of this tree is really hard to comprehend. And it can seem a little daunting with the spread of these invasive insects across, across the, the landscape as to what one person can do in order to reduce the spread and to detect them early. But there are a couple of simple things that everybody in the auditorium can do to actually help out with the problem. One is to keep an eye on the health of your trees. Pretty much every infestation of Asian longhorn beetle has been detected when a regular person noticed that their trees weren't doing very well and contacted state or federal officials. Many infestations of emerald ash borer have been detected in the same way. And early detection really does lead to reduced impacts, to reduce costs associated with management and to increased opportunity to manage these pests. 
there are a lot of resources available in order to learn what to look for in order to detect these pests. Some of them are on the internet, some of them are print publications, and for the technologically savvy, there are now apps as well that you can use. Uh, this app allows you to look for a specific pest, and then once you find that pest, you can look at pictures of the pest. There are training videos on how to examine your trees for signs of the pest. There's also ways to take photos with your smartphone, upload them to the site, and have um, professionals look at them to see if, in fact, your photos of a suspect insect or uh, suspect damage are, in fact, caused by the pest of concern. Another thing that you can do is to make a commitment to not moving firewood to, pr to purchase locally produced firewood or certified heat-treated firewood. These insects really do move in firewood. Many outbreaks of emerald ash borer have been found near campsites or near locations where large numbers of people go to camp and, and they bring their wood. We've seen in New Hampshire firewood coming in from as far away as California and Colorado. And every time that this firewood is moved, and most people don't move the firewood thinking that they're bringing pests with them, but there's the potential to move the range of the insects from less than a couple of miles a year to hundreds to thousands of miles and to bring in a new, uh, a new invasive pest. So what can you do to help preserve a sense of place in the forests of the Northeast? Um, recognize that we do have pests that are being introduced through trade, and that once that these pests escape into the natural environment, human movement of nursery stock, wood products, and especially firewood can spread these pests farther and faster than they'd be able to spread on their own. And um, so make a commitment to using uh, locally produced or certified heat-treated firewood and keep an eye on the health of your trees and report suspect signs and symptoms. Thank you very much for your time.